Hello again, and welcome back to Educator.com's Advanced PHP with MySQL course. In today's lesson, we're going to be doing a review of the HTTP protocol and learning about the POST method. Specifically, we're going to be learning about how the HTTP client-server model works. We're going to talk about HTTP messages uh, and the format of those, which basically are what gets sent back and forth between a web server and a web browser or web client uh, when a, a web page is requested. We're going to talk about HTTP, the format of HTTP requests, which are a type of HTTP message that the client sends to the server when it wants a web page. We're going to talk about the format of the HTTP responses, which is a message that the server sends back to a client um, when it requests a resource. We're going to talk about a special method in PHP called header, which allows you to set something known as HTTP headers. We're going to learn more about what those are as the lesson goes on. We're going to cover a review of the get method and how that works and how it looks in an HTTP request. And we're also going to learn um, about a new method, which is used for form submission, uh, that's, in, that's like get, but it's called the post method. And we're also going to talk about how to access data submitted on a PHP form via the post method. And then end with a uh, quick discussion of the slight differences between get and post methods. So first of all, HTTP, as, as, we, as you hopefully know, is the protocol that's used to talk between a web server and a web client. So um, it basically describes the rules when a web server, or excuse me, when a web client requests a web page from a web server and that web, web server responds. Essentially, clients request resources or web pages uh, from servers or web servers, and the server responds with the data of that web page if it's available, or it, as we'll see, it will, it will respond with an error code. So basically, the client server model that the HTTP protocol follows is basically a two set process. A client sends what's known as an HTTP request message to a server, which has a, spe a specific format. And then the server responds uh, with an HTTP response message uh, that also has a, a, a specified format. Both the HTTP request that the client sends to the server and the HTTP response that the server sends back to the client have a specified format that they follow. They're basically known as HTTP messages. And they're basically composed of two parts. They're composed of a message header and then they're also composed of, optionally, a message body. Uh, the header that's part of each HTTP message um, is different for requests and responses, as we're going to see. And it can basically contain multiple lines. And in an HTTP message, you have the HTTP header uh, at header section. And then it's separated by a blank line from what, what is known as the HTTP body section. So uh, as far as HTTP requests go, uh, that's the message that your client sends to the server when it wants a web page. Um, there's a required first line in an HTTP request. And this actually right here is an example of what an HTTP request looks like, or excuse me, what the header of an HTTP request looks like. Um, this first line follows this format up here, where you have to specify a method, the URI you're requesting, and then the HTTP version number that you're using. So for this particular line, or for this particular HTTP request, we're saying use the get method to request uh, the index.html file uh, using the HTTP protocol uh, version 1.1. Now this um, is a required line right here. And this line down here is uh, sometimes optional, sometimes not. Um, but you can add different sort of headers to these different files. So for example, in this case, we've added the, the header that says the host is www.educator.com. What that says when the client, uh, that way, uh, the, this basically, the web knows how to route this request to the server to request the index.html file. So for example, if we go and take a look at the educator.com website, and this uh, down here is the Firebug add-on. And if we go ahead and just refresh the page, um, we can see down here there's in use the net, what's known as the net panel of Firebug. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this up a little further. Um, what you can do is you can select um, HTML, and that's going to basically show you all the um, 
basically requests that were made for HTML files. And the first one you can see is a uh, get request for www.educator.com uh, slash index.html. And there's actually a couple of different sections that Firebug provides. Um, one of them is, is, has a tab called headers, which basically describes the um, headers that are included in the HTTP request as well as in the response from the server. And we haven't learned about the, the headers in a server response, but we um, just learned about the request headers. And actually, they're shown down here. And if you click on the view source, you can see what they look like in raw format. And I don't know, I, I hope this is, is big enough for you to see, but you'll see that it says, um, you can see it says get, uh, says it's the get method, a forward slash, and HTTP 1.1. And that's in this case, it's just a forward slash because we didn't actually request an index.html like we saw in the last example. We just requested whatever files at the root of the educator.com. You can see that there's a number of, these are what are known as HTTP headers. And basically, after this first required line, you can have zero or more HTTP headers, which basically provide additional information. In this case, in a request, they provide information to the web server um, about the particular request. Uh, this is saying that it's requesting the uh, root file from www.educator.com. There's a header, a common header that you'll see is user agent, which basically tells uh, the web server that you're using the, a Mozilla browser version 5.0. There's a number of, of different other things that you can use that it includes as well uh, things about the type of encoding you can use, the character sets, and so forth. Um, but essentially, this is the basic basis of a HTTP request. It has the first line that has the method, the URI, and the HTTP protocol, followed by um, zero or more HTTP headers. Now, for um, as we had learned on the last slide, an HTTP message has two parts. It has a header and a body. And uh, for get, uh, for the get method, there actually is no uh, message body. So you have the, the get header, which is this information contained right here, um, followed by a blank line, and then there's no body because there's no information being passed up uh, to the server in this case.